she said, it is in your head, but not in the sense that you're making it up, you're imagining it. It's coming from your brain. It's a problem with how the body sends and receives signals. Fear of the pain, fear that there might be something worse wrong with me, fear that I had a blood clot, fear that COVID was after crossing my blood brain barrier. Feelings generated in the unconscious mind can create real physical changes in our bodies. These physical reactions can be stopped if we put our minds to it. The symptoms they're getting in their body sometimes are really just a message. And this is really hard for some people to hear, but oftentimes they're a blessing in disguise. They're pointing us towards something that we need to do or we need to take care of. I don't believe your nervous system is messed up. I believe it's just operating on misinformation, meaning bad data and fear. Your nervous system's working, in my opinion, flawlessly. It's just that the fear and the bad information which is causing the fear has the volume cranked up. Just grabbing my daughter's little blankie. It's not nicer than a blankie when you want to feel calm. Earlier this year, you might remember, I had a physical and mental breakdown and I believed it was just long COVID. I got a really bad COVID infection in February and basically everything just broke. I was temporarily disabled, like I was barely able to do the things that I needed to do. I constantly ne needed someone around. I've since learned that things that I've been dealing with for most of my life um, all are very interconnected, all built up and contributed to my nervous system becoming hypersensitive, becoming temporarily dysfunctional. My alarm system wasn't working and COVID broke it. And part of fixing it has involved truly understanding why it wasn't working well in the first place. Lads, where do I start with how triggering having small kids is when you have unresolved childhood trauma? Oh my God, like you're looking at your own child and they're three, four, and you start having flashbacks to things from your early childhood. The perfect mother <laughs> does not exist. But like I had this pressure on myself to do everything right. Breastfeed on demand as long as you can. Do gentle parenting perfectly and be the primary caregiver. Always be around always nurture blah 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 but also uh, keep working and don't lose yourself and don't just be a mother you have all these goals you have all these hobbies and interests and you need to still make money a lot of just emotions they get stored up in your body it's an amazing book called the body keeps the score based on how we may have been raised or messages we may have internalized over the years our brain can become very afraid of certain feelings, certain emotions that are perfectly healthy and natural, like anger, like sadness, feelings like anxiety, like you can become terrified to even get anxious. Have any of you also had anxiety since you were children? <laughs> Hello? I, I've had anxiety since I was seven, since my parents divorced, since I first saw where my dad was moving into. It was like covered in mold. There was mold growing out of the chairs and I like puked all over the place. I could no longer sleep beside my mom because she had a new partner and you know, that would have been weird. <laughs> and yeah, so then from then on, I'm like falling asleep watching TV at night and then they carry me to bed and I'm sleepwalking, I'm wet in the bed, I'm having night terrors. And um, ever since then I have, it really embarrasses me, but I've, I eat the insides of my cheeks constantly all day. Anyone who knows me, watches me doing this. I push my cheeks into my teeth so I can chew them. It's a body focused repetitive behavior, not dissimilar to hair pulling or skin picking and it is related to my anxiety. I've, I've had a lot of mental health stuff since I was a child that um, I've kind of had to face when I've had a crisis, but a lot of it has just been kind of left there because I've been able to get on with my my life. Um, I've been able to get a degree. I've been able to write books. I've been able to buy a house. And, you know, everyone has stuff. So I kind of just thought it would just be this thing. I had a huge breakdown when I was 19. That was so bad, I can't remember much of it. But 
all I know is that it involved me being essentially housebound for a year, staying up all night, sleeping most of the day, gaining a lot of weight, constant panic attacks, really bad depression. It was a terrible time of my life and I went on to have an incredible 20s, like my 20s were phenomenal, but there was stuff. There was eating disorders at the start of my 20s. There was irritable bowel syndrome in my late 20s. I discovered that my absolute biggest trigger is stress. So I started keeping this a food and poo diary. This proves it, like if I'm having a travel day where I'm on airplanes, can't poo. If I'm having an anxiety attack or a bad anxiety day, can't poo. When I was moving house, couldn't poo. <laughs> stress coincides with more symptoms. There was alcohol problems and explosive uh, rage outbursts when drunk, abandonment issues, loads of things even that I've never come on here really talking about, but I've had chronic neck pain for years. I've been in and out of physio. I've shared a bit about that on Instagram stories. I often sit like this and I multiple times a day have to force my shoulders to relax so that I am not anticipate, like I'm, it's like I'm constantly bracing myself for something terrible to happen. Other things I've not mentioned on here like TMJ. There was a time when I could barely move my mouth, my jaw, it clicks all the time. Don't know if you can hear that. But like, you know, and they were like, you need to wear this mouth guard at night. And there's loads of stuff I've not sh shared online. But let's just say I've had a lot of different chronic things. And it, it, the amount of weight and pressure that I put on myself, of my own choices to do up a house, to constantly watch the news and to absorb things that are going on in the world that I literally can't do anything about. In the lead up to this breakdown, I was lying in bed every single night for hours on my phone looking at what was happening in Gaza, just shaking with distress and feeling helpless. And you know, no matter what I did do or could do, like donating and sharing information on Instagram stories and then that would be suppressed by Instagram and attending protests and um, just a, f this complete feeling of, of absolute powerlessness and it's not normal to to have constant access to videos of children dying or children that are dead um, and then you're looking at such videos while you're lying beside your own child. And my doctor said to me, your body can't tell the difference. Your body, your brain, isn't able to understand that you're safe right now. And that all this stuff isn't actually about to happen to your children. Um, and then also just the guilt, um, well, wanting to turn away and not look at it, and the guilt because I felt um, that I must bear witness. I had such whiplash. I just felt really weird about posting content with all this stuff going on. Yeah, anyway, all this was going on. And then in my 30s, we had the pandemic and I had a couple of kids. Traumatic birth experience with my first baby. Many of you remember that. And while I processed it in therapy, I didn't fully physically recover before getting pregnant a second time. I was still breastfeeding while I was pregnant and good sleep was a distant memory, which is not good news for the nervous system, as I have learned. After my daughter was born, I started to have waves of weird tingling all over my body and extreme fatigue and really crazy brain fog. Couldn't finish conversations, had to stop my husband or my dad mid-sentence if they were trying to tell me something that was going to happen next week. I was like, don't even tell, I'm not going to retain that information. Lots of symptoms that I put down to being a new parent and not sleeping great. Then this year happened and after I got the COVID, everything stopped working in my body. My ears were ringing with tinnitus, I couldn't swallow. My insides felt like they were vibrating. My heart just constantly kept pounding. The symptom that I had the biggest issue with was burning pins and needles. Like imagine razor burn combined with pins and needles and it's just kind of in all your 
in your arms and legs and in, in, across your head and, and it, almost in your brain. I had extreme sensitivity in my sense of touch as well. So like the blanket against my skin caused severe pins and needles, the feeling of my head, my face on my pillow. It felt impossible not to focus on it. All these sensations that were new to me that I was having on top of extreme fatigue, brain fog, muscle spasms, twitching muscles, heart palpitations, an overwhelming feeling of dread and doom. Um, you know, I'd stand up and my heart beat would go from like 60 to like 120 immediately. Stuff like just needing to pee constantly, like so many things happened and hospitals ruled out serious issues but like I saw so many doctors over the course of about eight weeks through my health insurance, just my local GP, different hospitals. Some of them fobbed me off because I was so sleep deprived, you know, having a one year old and a three year old and um, because of my history with anxiety. The end of last year was really hard, like so much stuff that you just don't see online. I found it really hard to just stop and be grateful for all of the great things in my life and I became hyper fixated on what was wrong, health challenges my dad was experiencing. I just should have listen to my body those waves of fatigue and tingling that was my body asking me to take better care of myself and to process emotions that i was avoiding it's been one of the most stressful times of my life this year two different doctors told me it was early stage chronic fatigue syndrome cfs or me cfs one other doctor said it was probably fibromyalgia then my gp was like right you need to see a neurologist because I began having some really funky stuff happening like uh, areas of skin that just be like super hot or super cold, but not to touch, just like the sensation. Um, a stammer, I developed a stammer. Other people were kind of noticing it. So I kept trying to talk and my voice and my sentence would just stop in the middle of the sentence, like, and just a lot of neurological kind of stuff. Um, and then another insomnia. Like, it's literally a joke. So anyway, my doctor was like, yeah, you need to see a neurologist. And um, she basically immediately knew what was wrong with me. I saw Dr. Monica Georgescu from The Matter Private. She was amazing. She was like, I am 99.9% .9 sure that you are dealing with a functional neurological disorder and that sounded terrifying and um, neurological disorder but then she broke it down for me functional neurological disorder that's a condition in which you show psychological stress in physical ways your mind affects your body in unusual ways sometimes we certainly look for people who have undergone difficulties either in their present life or past life and sometimes find them connected but other times we find a medical trigger. There's different types of it as well. So mine is to do with sensory symptoms and then there was some cognitive symptoms. This is the website the neurologist sent me to and yeah, I've highlighted here all of the associated symptoms of mine, like the pain and fatigue and sleep issues, and health anxiety and panic. Treatment can help it. In fact, for a lot of people, once they understand what's happening and get educated about it, many, if not all of their symptoms go away. And my mind was blown hearing her talking about this because I had read a book called The Mind-Body Prescription by Dr. John Sarno. And this book is huge in long COVID circles. Um, and that book had already started to really help me. John Sarno believed that a huge amount of chronic pain, like a different back pain, neck pain, um, fibromyalgia, migraines, uh, lots of different things are, it's like a mind-body connection thing and there's repressed rage and fears in the body and the body sends out symptoms to distract us from those feelings because it perceives them as too scary to even face or deal with and his theory was that the brain 
sends less oxygen or blood flow and therefore oxygen to certain areas. Really mild oxygen deprivation, but like it's enough to like cause intense uh, pain and sensations for people and like nerve sensations and everything. Lots of things that I was dealing with. There was a catastrophe in her life three years ago. She began to have symptoms. She came across my books and said, I think these were all related. And I said, they certainly are. So many of the problems I've had in my life are like, they're all interconnected. It's, it's all interconnected. It's like we, we give these things, all these millions of labels, and this syndrome and this disorder, they're like all branches of the same bloody tree. Connections between emotions and our physical body are very real. These are neural circuits that get ingrained, get built in, get activated, get turned on and off. Because when we can understand that, we can understand ourselves and the people we love and care about. And anyway, a lot of people with long COVID have found that Dr. John Sarno's teachings have helped or completely reversed their problems. Yeah, a lot of the stuff that he teaches sounds basically the same as functional neurological disorder. He called it TMS. Some people say like TMS, too much stress or TMS, their mind body syndrome. Fear of stress becomes the driving force behind symptoms. Fear of pain, fear of symptoms, fear of fear. Panic, panic, danger, danger. It's like a vicious circle. The neurologist told me that with FND, there's a lot of stigma around it because people think that it's just you making stuff up or, or that um, it's, you know, that something that's psychosomatic is like, that's nothing like oh, show me a broken leg show me a broken arm but the pain that your own brain can cause you is on par with if not sometimes worse than a physical what a physical injury can cause and like pain when you think about it is there to protect you you feel pain if you if you like put your hand on a hot oven and you burn yourself you go like that and so if your body is perceiving danger, is perceiving threats, your body can give you pain to make you retreat, to force you to stop, to force you to slow down. Feeling in danger when we're actually safe, that is something that gets so ingrained um, and it can have all kinds of knock-on effects on our bodies, but this thing exists called neuroplasticity. Our brain's ability to learn and change and create new wiring, and so we can change this feeling of constant perceived danger and all the negative effects that it causes can be reversed, erased. My body is way more inclined to to be constantly hyper vigilant and on the lookout for danger and that that's just kind of inbuilt into me from childhood like but I can influence that with my environment with what I'm choosing to think and pay attention to. One of the biggest things that I've done that has just helped has been to speak nicely to my own brain and be like, thank you for trying to keep me safe. Um, I am safe and I am okay. And you can turn that, that symptom off now. And like, oh, I'm not gonna panic about that feeling or that sensation or that pain, even though it doesn't feel very nice. Retraining my brain to feel safe, like, learning about polyvagal theory, polyvagal exercises, things that I need to remember to do as often as possible that like teach my body that safety, like, you know, gentle touch, taking my shoes off out in the grass, breathing. Everyone talks about bloody breathing, but dysfunctional breathing is a big part of long COVID for so many people. Another thing I was told that I have, I was, you know, shallow breathing, chest breathing, mouth breathing. If I can find people who have been diagnosed with something and have recovered from it, those are the ones I am going to cling to. I pay so much attention to people who've had similar experiences to me and have come through it. And I learn something new every single day through channels like this. This is a lady who like interviews people who have recovered. Sitting with my pain and accepting it and, and um, not trying to, not trying to get rid of it, like just allowing it and just thinking, you know, that's gonna go away. Let me go focus on this other thing. Let me not give that all of my attention. Sending messages of safety to the brain, observing thoughts rather than believing them. 
my brain may sometimes get a thought like see a funny mole and just think I have skin can cancer what if I died what would happen to the kids like what I do now when it th you can't con control your thoughts in the sense of like stopping negative thoughts they're going to happen all day but what I do is I look at them and say like is that true or is that just you know do I want to pay attention to that and I like imagine I turn them into a cloud and I send them off into the sky and then I'm like observing them like ooh, that's becoming a big dark cloud and that one is has lightning and then look at that little fluffy cloud about that lovely thing I thought about earlier so with this functional neurological disorder it's usually treated with a combination of um physio and psychotherapy but yeah with the psychotherapy um it, it it's just it's really really important for me anyway at the core of what's led to this is a lot of stuff that's just like deep 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 and I have been doing counseling for the past few years which has been enough to kind of keep my head above water um but psychotherapy and counseling are a little bit different counseling is a little bit more like a short-term solution for issues happening right now like stuff that you're kind of going through right now a counselor gives you guidance and support and and can help talk you through things psychotherapy that is like about reoccurring problems that have been like happening over the years over the years um it's like more about long-term stuff it's more much more in-depth they can use other strategies like one that i really wanted to do was internal family systems comment below if that's ever helped you but yeah so i really wanted to switch from a counselor to a psychotherapist because that was on my like you know right up from the neurologist and as you know i work with better help i've been working with them for a long long time they're a paid partner of today's video but within better help it's like it takes seconds to change therapists and i did that couple of weeks ago I switched from the lovely lady no I'm really sad I had to grieve her the woman that I've been speaking to about a lot of like motherhood related stuff she really helped me to make the decision to night wean my daughter from breastfeeding recently and to like have boundaries with my kids and to like prioritize myself a bit more and um she helped me so much but yeah I've had to say goodbye to her I will actually like really miss her like my, my abandonment issues just they love to pop up even when it's me abandoning someone else. But yeah, I've switched to someone within BetterHelp who is a psychotherapist. She's got 20 years experience and she does internal family systems. That was like written under her list of types of therapy that she does. So yeah, I've changed and um, so far so good. Um, it's going to take time, of course, but as you know, or maybe you don't, but yeah, BetterHelp, their mission is to make starting therapy easier. I do not think I would have gotten anywhere in my life without therapy. I have been seeing different therapists since I was 19, I want to say, and based on the level of stuff I'm dealing with, yeah, I think I've been doing pretty well in my life. And if you were someone who just knew me, like from get-togethers, work events, anything like that. You'd never, you'd probably never think there was anything wrong. I owe that to the act of regularly being extremely vulnerable with a professional. BetterHelp can help you to start working on your own mountain of, of stuff. And if you use my link, you get a special discount. That's in the description box down there. You can call and message your therapist from the comfort of your own home. There's a journal in the BetterHelp platform that you can use as well to just reflect on how you're doing and your progress. And there's group sessions that you can do on like, well, for me, it comes up with parenting ones usually, but like, you know, coupled stuff and lots of lovely beneficial classes. Um, it takes a lot of courage and strength and self-awareness, I think, to actually seek help. And if you have done so, I am very proud of you. And if you're, yeah, if you're thinking about it, do check out their website and read through all of the trust pilot reviews. And yeah, take, take my word for it. I would not have got through the last few months without them. Would not have, no, way um that's something I I just I don't know how to talk about this right so I've never ever 
been suicidal in my life. Like I've I've wrote an entire novel about a character who was feeling suicidal. Um, dear Jenna from my novel Glass Houses. It's a book all about mental health, healing, and um, it was extremely helpful for me to write that book during the pandemic. I think I processed so many things that I otherwise would not have. Maybe I would have had a breakdown then, but like expressive writing, creative writing are, are such wonderful outlets for um for our brains. But yeah, I've I've never been suicidal. I have self-harmed on a few occasions and I won't go into that but yeah not everything has to be has to be shared Mel um but earlier this year I was in such a bad way with anxiety coupled with exhaustion coupled with insomnia coupled with physical pain coupled with fear fear of the pain, fear that there might be something worse wrong with me, fear that I had a blood clot, fear that COVID was after crossing my blood brain barrier and I'd never be okay again. Like I was going down all these rabbit holes. My mitochondria are damaged like this and that and the other, like just health anxiety went absolutely nuts after I start having all these weird sensations. Um, you know, oh, I must have nerve damage. I might have multiple cirrhosis, like just, you know, catastrophizing and not that having MS is like a catastrophe or whatever it's just more so the the mindset that I was in I was in this catastrophe mindset absolutely terrified walking around I was not okay um and I I I said it to my husband on a couple of the really bad days when the nerve stuff was just, I just felt like there was needles sticking in my body all over the place. And then I'm trying to look after kids and I'm, you know, trying to feed myself. And that, you know, I was trying to just get through. This was all back in March. Um, and I said to him a couple of times, like, I will not be able to live the rest of my life like this. I will, there's no way, like if, if this doesn't go away, I'll be going away. I won't be able to deal with this. I cannot bear this. Like it, it was it was screaming levels of pain. And it makes me really sad now being in like a pain-free state like 98% of the time. Sometimes I get like little little tiny mini flare-ups and slivers and flavors of it but I practice brain retraining techniques to reduce how I'm perceiving the pains I yeah I, I strip it back to all of the bare basic stuff like mindfulness nature lots and lots and lots of nature like I'm outside half the day now every day we're so disconnected from the earth it's insane honestly lads watch the documentaries on YouTube about earthing. Go outdoors, take your shoes off, stand barefoot on the earth, or sit on the earth, put your feet and your hands on the earth, and you will instantly notice the pain and the inflammation begin to drain from your body. When you think about it, we breathe air how many times a minute? Like we, we have to drink so much water. We're 70% we're made out of water. We think we're so clever, like, like with our, you know, plastic soles of our shoes like we need to be touching the planet and and soil and dirt and grass and and the beach and and being in cold water and like I'm having cold showers I'm going out in my garden and and and, and spending loads of time just like taking in the trees and touching them and like I am going full-on hippie anytime I feel myself getting anxious or whatever I turn to people online that I have found that are really calming like there's this guy on YouTube called his channel is called pain free you when your symptoms start going up notice your response if you freak out do the symptoms keep going up and keep getting worse or are you remaining calm reassuring yourself and not buying into the fear that the symptoms are creating and what happens then more often than not things can settle down the only thing that can create symptoms as wild and woolly as the symptoms we're experiencing is the brain. 
And the more we freak out, the more we panic, the more symptoms show up. That's just more evidence of a brain running the show. He has helped me so much with stuff like insomnia. So if I'm lying in bed and I'm just not falling asleep, and then if I feel a little bit of the burning sensations, because it's like my body became afraid of going to bed and associated the bed with pain because that's where it all, all the electric, being electrocuted feelings started for me at the end of my acute COVID infection. Um, and then the fear of being constantly woken up by my daughter when I'm in this horribly ill, tired, brain foggy state and like having to deal with her and I was feeling so much rage and so much resentment and so much like anger toward this poor little baby who literally just like has needs at night and you know I continued to meet those needs but I would my needs weren't being met and so yeah there was just a lot of like frustration and sadness and rage and um and yeah like bedtime nighttime became this thing that I feared I was so scared to go into my bed and and I'd be there with the lavender on the pillow and you know I'd be trying to do a, a breathwork meditation and 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 I'd be lying there just like come on I have to fall asleep like they're going to be awake at five or six in the morning and it's already nine and now it's ten and now it's midnight and oh god now it's two in the morning and oh now I can hear Thomas my husband getting up for work and it's half three and like I was having nights like that and anyway this channel this guy paying for you he, um he said stuff to do with insomnia that just completely changed everything for me like what you fear gets worse what you fear pers persists like fear enhances the body's protection mechanisms and like it pumps out like you get cortisol you get adrenaline and then your body's like you definitely can't go to sleep now something bad is gonna happen so he was like the most important thing in almost every situation to do with anxiety and pain is is finding calm and is communicating safety and calmness to your own brain um and so he'd be like you know just kind of roll over and like oh i'm not not sleeping that's okay i can i get to lie here a bit more oh it's so cozy oh this is so comfy look at me i get to lie here more um to just completely change that internal dialogue a bit like you know where you're like oh tomorrow's going to be terrible I'm going to be so exhausted I'm going to be shouting at my kids and it's all going to be terrible and I won't be able to function it's like human beings can survive on s such little sleep and we our bodies also will just eventually shut off and shut down when we're tired enough I think he said something in the video like about it was this story about a mother talking to her daughter who was having insomnia and the mother said something like um if you just lie there and you're just getting rest in the dark like you'll you'll have enough energy tomorrow everything will be okay like you will be able to get through the day tomorrow your body will get enough rest and then she just started being able to sleep yet taken away it's the, the point of just taking away the fear so something i'm doing now is like i come out here i sit on this couch i play asmr videos harry potter prefects bathroom asmr like just like there's so many asmr videos on youtube that are lovely and asmr just it's like this um a, a response that is like calming in your nervous system and uh doing that thing again with my shoulders i have to do this um it's like a nervous system your, your nervous system just really likes it mine does anyway it's like a massage for my nervous system some people absolutely hate it i love asmr but I'll play ASMR or I'll play calming music and I will read a kind of semi-boring book and like yeah keeping low light like maybe lighting a candle and just not thinking about the time not panicking and worrying about what I have to do tomorrow um just forcing my head to just clear it getting maybe a cup of herbal tea and just I am sleeping better I'm sleeping much better now um my daughter is night weaned I'm less afraid of going to bed I'm getting I'm having mo more days in a row than not where I'm having no pains or weird sensations a lot of my symptoms are gone the number one thing has been mindset has been thinking about my future and visualizing how I want my future to look all these things I want to do with my kids my 40s like so many different things I want to do and getting out of this negative poor me 
I am a victim, I am a martyr, like this, it's like, it's not, not that I was constantly in that mindset, but I was so easily pulled into this kind of just complaining and, and, and focusing on symptoms, complaining about symptoms, thinking about them all the time. And you know it, like when you focus on something, it seems so much worse and it does become so much worse. And where you put your attention and where you put your energy and focus, that is what you get more of. So for me to fully accept that my blood tests were normal, like my my chest x-ray, like the tests that they, the, the doctors did in the hospitals, like to fully accept that the brain can give very real symptoms when it is trying to protect us. That was like the beginning of me being able to just feel safer. I have had to disengage from constantly being busy and I have had to practice unlearning perfectionism. To build and honor boundaries has been huge. I've always liked to think of myself as someone who's great with ba building boundaries, but I have been shit with that. Like so many times I'll be like, I will not engage with trolls who write awful stuff about me or whatever, and then I would do it. And um, I would tell myself, I am gonna say no to things when I don't wanna do them. I'm not gonna be trying to like people please and, and to just not hurt people's feelings. So I'm gonna just do things even when I'm really overwhelmed and I have enough on my plate or whatever. And then I'd be like, yeah, okay, I'll be there at your party. Like I am actually saying no to these things now. I am finding support in my community, in my real world community. I'm leaving a lot of the online groups because while I thought they were helping me initially, I think they actually exasperated a lot of the anxiety. And um, yeah, it's just like a sea of negative stories as well a lot of the time. So I like focus on people who have recovered recovery stories. Hello, baby. The healing childhood trauma, the shadow work, you know, just keeping on going with that kind of stuff. But the main thing when it comes to like all the physical stuff is, is the thought, it is just my nervous system. It is just my nervous system. It is just my body trying to keep me safe. It's my job to teach my body that it is safe so it doesn't need to, could, because then those sensations and symptoms become useless and pointless when, you know, if your body's not going to be doing that if there's no point in it, you know? And if you have some kind of chronic thing or whatever, and you're like, not sure if this is you or not, like think about times when you've been symptom free, like you might be on a holiday, you might be really relaxed, you might be smoking weed, whatever. Just like, are there times when you feel good, you feel pretty good? Really look at the, I suppose, patterns in your life and in your body and in your experience of, of life and, and notice these things. Bring it back to what does my body need? What do I need right now? I need to feel safe, I want to feel happy, I want to feel healthy, I want to feel strong um, and what can I do to bring it back to those things. One thing that I'm doing that is r really amazing is craniosacral therapy. It's like a light touch, gentle kind of, it feels like this nurturing touch but what they're doing is like it's different parts of your craniosacral system and um, like kind of down along your spine and they're like feeling for imbalances or something and like I don't know but anyway it releases all these emotions and I go in and sometimes I'm laughing and sometimes I'm crying and sometimes you know you get these all these feelings and then you talk to the therapist about the stuff this is something that a lot of people get done for like babies I think a lot of babies their nervous system can be shot to shit like I have all my opinions very strong opinions about the fact that I think babies should be constantly held and slept. they should have someone sleeping beside them, that they need the skin to skin and they need the constant like hearing the heartbeat and all to feel safe. Like I'm, I just, I have my opinions on that stuff. But, and a lot of babies, yeah, their nervous system is really like, you know, from even from a traumatic birth or whatever. And craniosacral therapists can do wonders and, and on adults and, I, uh, I've been going semi-regularly and um, my craniosacral therapist, my lady that I go to has given me flower essences to be taking. And so I'm getting into all the hippy whippy dippy doo da stuff and it suits me and I feel really good for it. Um, on top of, you know, the traditional medical system has its place. And at the start of this whole journey, I really needed medication for my anxiety. 
and the nerve stuff but like what ultimately happened with with that I'm trying to wean off pregabalin it's called and every time I taper down I have horrible withdrawal side effects so I do really want to get out completely off it but it was it was completely getting rid of my anxiety but like I was still having the nerve sensations they were just like not as intense but my feeling my deep feeling inside me was that I what I need to address runs quite deep and I can't do that if that if those feelings are being masked and um and I was just feeling a little bit like you know I wasn't able to really cry and and it, you know it was kind of nice to have a break from anxiety after being an anxious person for a very long time but I'm trying not to hate my anxiety and be afraid of it like I just I want to befriend it and I think that that will resolve a lot of it and it it is doing that the last time I tapered down is when my anxiety came back it was a few months ago and yeah I'm finding now that even if my body starts experiencing panic symptoms like I break out in a sweat and you know the heart rate and I get the tingling and all, all that kind of stuff if I go into the bathroom smile at myself in the mirror get, hop in a cold shower to like bring myself back to like here and now because you cannot get in the cold shower and be and have your thoughts going a million miles a minute because if you are in the cold shower it's like oh this is really cold this is cold oh this is cold like you can't think about anything else and then you're like ah panic attack gone or if I go out in the grass in the garden it just kind of I don't know it's like I try and treat it like I wrote about this before in, in one of my books but like like it's a roller coaster like oh yeah and 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 so that's why like the cold shower like going outside or just doing something like and trying to almost turn it because it's like excitement it's like a similar like when you get really excited and you get the butterflies and that's like you know mind body the mind and body are one and we really need to stop lumping physical illness and mental illness into separate categories. They're so interconnected, it is insane. My two biggest takeaways from the experience of getting this diagnosis are that I need to treat myself like I am my own best friend. I need to be kind to myself, compassionate to myself. I need to empathize with myself. Also, I am never going back to asking more of myself than what I have to give like spread myself too thin, butter scraped over too much bread, mm -mm -mm, never again. She can't handle it, she can't, she can't do it. This has existed for 35 years and I think going forward, I actually really, really do really, yes, yes, have to live the slow, slow, soft life. Um, I made a vlog about that. It's so funny, but I made a vlog about that right before everything got really, really hard. It was a vlog about, yeah, how chaotic life had been and how I wanted to live slower and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, it's like I knew I needed to do it, but I was still, you know, Miss Perfectionist, Miss Have to Do It All. Um, and then it's like I needed a bus to hit me, which was the COVID, and to knock me onto the couch. I, I just needed that. It's like, this has been just a huge wake up call. Um, and I couldn't have gotten through the past few months without my amazing husband. He's just, bit, he's like, he is so supportive. He's like a rock. It means a lot to me when he says to me that he appreciates and notices how much effort I'm putting into my own recovery. Like he said to me, you know, Melanie, if you were someone else, if you weren't you, you could still be on that couch just unable to do anything like it's very possible and that that does happen to some people and that's not it's not their fault but the neurologist even said it to me she was like there is no magic pill that will get you out of this you have to get you out of this and you can and people do um and she gave me this website to go and look i think it was like neurosymptoms.org she seemed very uh, hopeful and optimistic and, and and stuff but she was like yeah like you did you got to do the work like it's 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 not this overnight switch where you just oh I'm gonna do brain retraining and now I'm completely better it is a slow long process for me and it has been and I'm not like completely 100% yet because I'm getting these little like mini flare-ups and one of the coaches that I found 
who deals with people who have these kinds of problems he's from the cfs recovery youtube channel but he said that what i'm experiencing right now is kind of like the final the nervous system doing its final like checks and balances and just like my nervous system just like making sure just like it adapts every time i respond positively to my symptoms and i'm just i'm so grateful for the internet i'm so grateful for access to education and information and recovery stories. I'm so grateful to BetterHelp. I've been a paying customer for many years with them and and they've just, they, yeah, helped me to keep my head above water no matter what life has been throwing at me, no matter what motherhood surprises have been landing on my doorstep. Um, and I'm so grateful to all of you. I had some extremely encouraging messages from you. Um, not just on like that original video about my health scare, but on my Instagram DMs and like people in very similar situations or people who had been in a similar situation and then they got better. Thank you so much if you've ever bothered to sit and write me out a message or write me out a comment. Like every single comment on these videos is like, I just, I love reading them. I know I don't get to reply to all of them. I just don't have the time. Um, and I don't want to just hire someone else to reply for me. A lot of people do that who make content and like, I don't like that. Um, so like, yeah, if you ever get a reply, it is actually from me. And um, just thank you, especially for your messages on this topic. For being so understanding, even when I have said things, maybe imperfectly, like in one of the posts I did on, on Instagram about this, I mentioned... Um, graded exercise as part of like how I'd gotten better and I I, I what I meant was that like as I felt a bit better I added in a bit more activity and then I checked how I felt and then if I felt worse I pulled back a bit and rested and if I felt okay then I'd keep adding in and adding in and um, I didn't mean that I did like some kind of program where it's like you have to do more consistently each week regardless of how you feel because I know people with similar situations will have a huge crash then and um yeah like just, like I I'm not perfect and I will say things sometimes incorrectly or I, I won't give enough context to what I mean um and you all have just been so supportive while I've gone through this like weird stage and um I've tried to keep posting content during all of this, like even on hard weeks, like you might see like a little funny movie reel or on Instagram or like whatever, you're not gonna always see everything. But recently I've felt healthier mentally and physically than I have since before I had my first child. So that to me is a sign that I am basically fully recovered and my my nervous system is still just trying to like, just make sure with these little odd bits of pins and needles and things that I get, but they're so slight. They come and go within like 20 minutes, whereas it, it's just so different now. And so, yeah, I will not be walking around with this FND label across my forehead in the same way I do not want to be, I do not want to be the ADHD girl. I do not want to be the eating disorder girl, the acne girl, the IBS girl, the TMJ girl. Like I just, in the past, like my content has always been about my life. And anytime I've shared anything that I've gone through, um, it temporarily feels like it becomes this part of my identity or whatever. You know, if I've shared about my sexuality or if I've shared about um, a birth experience I had like I don't want to have these labels defining me especially when they're to do with my my health and um, I want my personality and my interests yeah like I want that kind of stuff to define me not something I'm experiencing because that is not me me and thee are the same that is my belief we are all connected to each other we are all connected to every everything else um and we we literally are like the moon, the tides, the, you know, it's, it's all, we are all one. Yeah. So like, I'm not going to be making all this like FND content because this is not something that's going to define me because I was diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder, age 19. And f for many years after that, many years went by where I was mostly fine and I wasn't having all these constant anxiety attacks and stuff like that. Um, there's been many things that I've been told, like, you have this thing, and then 
then suddenly I don't. Don't know what to tell you. Like every cell in our bodies is constantly changing and we have so much more power and control than we believe. Life is a wild ride. And yeah, things are never completely perfect. All the time, we're always learning, we're always growing. And yeah, this this is, this is year has been a big one for me. I hope that this year is like the beginning of Melanie 2.0. Like I hope and I believe, I want to believe that I will be better, I will continue to be better. I will continue to live in a way that best serves my brain, my body. Um. If you have any experience with any of this stuff, please do let me know down below. But also just where are you at with your mental health, your physical health, and what would you like to see change? And what are you doing to make those changes? What are you actually, what actions are you taking to move the dial in the right direction? Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. This has just been a little, little wee catch up gonna go have the rest of my tea and go out for a meal with my family um i've no hands left to do blow a kiss but i'll give you a least kiss <laughs>